which I did do it before. Okay, well you gotta make sure there's a red dot. Uh, so apparently something happened to the recording. I had this idea. So I have, I'm gonna say it all again. Somebody gave me an assignment to make a picture of dead food or a picture of, with a theme of dead food, which in reality, that's an oxymoron. That's a contradiction in terms. Because what makes something food is that it's life. It's being transferred. Life being transferred from one place to another, from one organism to another. Um, so it must mean either, you know, of those two things I can think of, stuff that is rotting and it's dead, so you don't eat it. At least humans don't eat it. Other things do. Well, still eat it. So I looked at the USDA DA food pyramid because the first thing I thought of was just a pile of dead, uh, dead stuff, dead material matter, food. Um, that's maybe green. It's, it's turning, it's molding, getting moldy, so it's turning green. So I'm going to add, you know, other colors that are not natural to the food. And this is very schematic. This is just my thoughts, you know, quick thoughts and little sketches of um, the ideas. And I no longer like to draw because I did so so many thousands of drawings and then I figured out I couldn't paint over them. I couldn't make them t turn into paintings very easily. So I decided to learn how to quickly paint and then paint over, you know, just do the rough and then go right from there, just refine the painting. And it's much more fun for me at this stage in my life at least. Um, so the, the next thing I was thinking is yeah, what, a pile. What does it make me think of? A pyramid. The, the ancient pyramids of Egypt. And they, you know, at least some of them had tombs in them. So they were very valuable things or interesting things. Yeah, they were considered valuable at that time. And now the stuff that's in there that's gold made of gold is considered valuable and the history is valuable um, but if we had you know a, a cross section of you go in and you have a, ch a channel I mean a passageway and you come into this tomb area and then you have bread and pasta and all the things well actually Big Macs you have Big Macs and uh, stuff like that fast food pictures of fast food and they're like in a museum of dead food so that this becomes an entombment entombment of the dead food and uh, on top uh, and then over the years this is built up over it and it's all all buried and nobody knows it's there anymore this is you know the illustration but the very tip maybe close to the top but now people only eat fresh food the people at the top there they have sprouts they have you know things growing and they just eat that the very uh, fresh food so I could have all these things growing up there looking fresh so what comes to my mind is that it's very hard to illustrate something without its opposite how do you show that something is dead if you don't show what's alive? Um, but immediately the problem of the of scale um, presents itself to me. Like, how do you, you know, you're going to have people up here walking, doing stuff, and maybe they're this big. And, um, dancing, walking along, and eating fresh food, and being happy. Because we're in an enlightened period when people don't no longer eat dead food. So, that's as big as I could probably ever make them and still show what's underground. Like a cutout of what's underground. And uh, I actually always loved the layered effect that I saw in, when I was a kid in, in illustrated books. You know, the layers of um, 
stuff when you cut open a hillside sometimes humans or somebody does you can see the layers of rocks and stuff um, so that's an interesting thing but has nothing to do with much much not much to do with dead food so um, the idea of dead food <laughs> my my the person who gave me this uh, commission said we want to see what you come up with we're not going to tell you what we mean by dead food I don't even know if it means rotting food or if it means things that have been you know that are relatively not alive and not nutritious because they've been overcooked they have had um, too many things added you know preservatives and pesticides and hormones and stuff so that it doesn't enliven you enliven you the way a fresh uh, a fresh picked vegetable from your own garden would um, so I'm just blending it because one of the things I learned recently is that it's uh, irritating to come back to a painting that is sharp edged full of you know uh, sharp edged shapes and I think the reason for that is that everything that is sharp edged takes, tells your brain this is important this is uh, defined and, and it's, it's the brain is thinking oh I gotta figure out what this means what is this? Uh, you know, is it dangerous? Is it pleasant? Pleasant? Extremely pleasant or extremely unpleasant? And so, this wonderful teacher at the college told me, if you blur all your edges on a, on a sketch, on a first sketch, then um, it's not as unpleasant to come back to it and. Um, contemplate it and you know it's not that it, it does take time it takes time to blur the edges and but I found she was really right she was so right the um, it's much more pleasant to look like look at a hazy picture um, that's just a sketch like thing down to look at stuff with sharp edges because the sharp edges are like screaming they're like yelling at you it's like somebody writing in all caps all capitalized uh, letters which reads as yelling or screaming now so the problem with scale is if I'm thinking you know realistically trying to paint realistically I'm not going to be able to show bread and stuff in an interesting way. It's going to be tiny little details inside this tomb, which rhymes with the womb. Um, inside this tomb, they're going to be much smaller than the, the human, you know, the, the shapes of the humans up here, of the people, which are hard to make fuzzy. My background is usually very close to Naples yellow, but not exactly Naples yellow. I wish I had known when I had this tinted that it would that they would be really great to have it exactly Naples yellow, because then I can always paint into that tinted ground and blend whatever is, you know, so very close. Oh my gosh, now I'm blending trying to make those fuzzy. Make the people's, uh, the people shape figures indications also fuzzy or um, blurry, out of focus. Uh, so it should be pleasing, to, more pleasing to the eye that way. And it does. It's really very close. Naples yellow is very close to my tint and color. And it's sort of blending in now. So the, the, the problem I have is that I usually want to make a painting that is attractive, that somebody wants to hang on their wall and actually look at year after year, or at least for a few months. 
if you're doing an illustration for a magazine, you know, people are going to glance at it. They may, they may only look at it for a few seconds. They get the idea and then they don't have to look at it anymore. And that's a different kind of thing than what I've been trying to do uh, so far is to make something that's beautiful or inspiring. And I don't know how to do that with the subject called dead food. To me, that's not inspiring. That's the opposite. That's I wouldn't want a picture of dead food on my wall. Oh, here, I didn't blend the edge of this dirt, the edge of the earth here. I'm going to now uh, blend and put that out of focus. And the paint that I use, that I like to use, which is what I'm using here, is alkyd oil. It dries pretty fast. It's already dried a little bit so that when I'm blending this, you still see some of those marks that are supposed to be like plants. So now I can even blend behind and around them, and they're still there, um, which is really cool, I think. I think you can do that with acrylics, too. But I'm only just learning how to use jet blending gel medium with acrylics and do some similar things. This, I, well, maybe just I'm used to it. I feel like it's so quick to get an effect, uh, a blended effect, a, a, a soft, I mean you can have some stuff really sharp and in, in, in focus, that certainly you can do that too, but um, as this dries, you know, if you learn it, you find out how it behaves, how the paint behaves, and then you can learn how to do effects, um, knowing how long it's going to take before the stuff can be painted over or blended into without losing the original shape. I'm really out of the paint and I should be getting more of it. But the point is, I, I illustration is really hard because um, it's more like an idea thing. It's not like like art. It's not like. But, but the other thing is that Egyptians were doing ideograms. They were all their art. You would say, could say is all uh, that we know of is basically symbols, symbolic. Uh, it's almost you know it's language. It's similar to their uh, well, I guess it is their language. Their written language, pictograms. And so this might work in with the theme of having an entombed uh, food, <laughs> this dead food. So, but for some reason my mind is always going to, how can I make this look beautiful? How can I make this like a morality tale with a nice happy ending? And I still feel like the, the most of the picture, you know, from the ground down is all about the dead stuff and only the lively happy stuff is up here so that's the problem that I've you know I can say I've identified right away at the, from the top of my head almost maybe in half an hour or so um, um, I like the idea of a cutaway you know if you had to, as I said, I guess, they, um, sometimes you see that on the side of a hill, and it's natural. You see some rocks, you see some, uh, you may see some fossils inside there, um, in the rocks, like from the time when there was an ocean there. So, all I'm doing is blending it now, as you can probably tell. I'm not really, I don't have any new ideas at the moment. I'm just um, trying to make it so that it's soft and bearable to look at this in the morning or whenever I come back to it. Um, so, 
they mentioned something about funny, you know, how, how it would be, if I come up with something that's funnier than what they're thinking of, to me the idea of dead food is not very funny. Um, or dead things in general is not very funny. Um, so to me, the question is how to make this alive and fun and overcome the deadness <laughs> or something like that. So one of the ways to do that would be to have a pun, a visual pun where now I just noticed that I, this looks like plowed earth it's starting in, to become um, lines of plowed earth looks a little bit like that accidentally and so now this could be spread out it could be as a perspective you know things getting smaller in the distance and simultaneously look like a pyramid and then it would be funny or it would be fun but you know something like that you get it in the first glance you get it you don't need to look at it again and again and again every day all day um, unless it feeds you, it gives you some kind of validation for something in your life as you go off to work. So, um, and it seems like what makes things beautiful is something else. Um, if you have a visual pun, it's pretty cool and amazing, but I think a lot of people feel like there's something else that really makes it so you want to look at it every day. And what that is, <laughs> that's not so easy to come up with and, and find and define and always do, and do it every time, right? And of course, now we also have the womb, we have the, uh, we have the potential pun to work with of the uh, umbilical cord that passageway looks like an umbilical cord. It's easy to think of an idea like that. It's not easy to make the whole painting work all together. Um, it's, um, it's a lot of, that's a big job to try to integrate all those things. If somebody's paying me a thousand dollars, I'll definitely try to do it. And I have no idea what my budget is here. But I'm going to try to cover this whole pain, uh, canvas so at least it looks like a complete painting. Whether I like it or not, it's complete. Uh, it's finished in that sense. Maybe not finished in the sense that I like it and want to say go out in the world and populate the world um, with something like yourself. But it is a finished painting, and now if I work on the details, it's okay that it's just details, because the painting as a whole is finished. The sky is yellow, which shows, I mean, it, it conveys some, some sunniness and warmth, I think. And now if I work on the bread, you know, and pasta or whatever it is that I'm doing, I can try to make a picture of a turkey with a drumstick sticking out. That means meat. Um, now I can work on details and not lose. I mean, I could say that it's a finished painting no matter what I do. Because it is. It's <laughs> in the sense that I've got something on every part of the canvas that makes some kind of sense. Maybe not a lot of sense. But I used to go for years and years doing unfinished things in part of the canvas and then it would just not be nice to look at. And I think it's always hard for any of us to look at something that we feel like is not complete or not complete in the sense of conveying the feeling that we want or the information that we want to convey. 
And of course, when you're being creative, you, you sometimes you don't know what it is you want to convey. Yeah, and it may be a vague feeling or a, a feeling of happiness, which is pretty subjective. And I, you know, I've been struggling to find ways to convey happiness through paintings. I've been struggling at that for many years. And it turns out, you know, the things that always make everybody happy are the quickest way. Make a picture of a kitten or anything that people love that's not scary, not, not threatening. But <laughs> an assignment like this is really tough, I think. Oops, I put the wrong... I, I thought I was putting Naples yellow on my uh, palette, but instead I put some more portrait pink or whatever it's called. Um, I just want to blend my background a little more into the sky, or whatever you call it. Yeah, so a little brighter, not so much mixed with the green to look sort of weird. Looks almost like smog when it's mixed with the green. And the original tinted background was, was pure. The pure what? We don't know, but at least it was pure yellow and I'm trying to make it more like that because the, it's a sunny, I like the sunniness of the light yellow. I might even add more or more white later to make it more so. So that's as far as I've gotten. I'm going to look at the camera and see what it's been doing, if anything.